You gonna play some music for a minute or two minutes? Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and over on the computer is Don. Hello. Don who's in the doghouse for various camera reasons this morning, right? Nah, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. I know. So hey everybody, are you guys ready for this? This is so cool. I wanted to do the fancy flock and it's from the I need a good design uh, this month and I just loved it Misha says hi hello hello to everyone good morning Sue and Dawn says Leah good morning good morning what I started off with as I usually start off with is picking the fabric I had a whole bunch picked out. I had piles left, right, and center, and it was just like, nah, that's not it. And what I started off with is basically this color of blue. It caught my attention, and I really love it. I don't know why I like bees on a blue background, but I like it. So I picked this layer cake. And another cool thing about it is, look, it's lettering which is really neat and it has pink and blue flowers. So everything is kind of pink and blue, a little bit of black in there. Of course, you got your gold, which matches all the bees. And because it's a layer cake, everything matches. So, I mean, I was thinking like country chickens, you know, they're fancy, but you know, it's kind of cute. So perfect fabric for it. Ooh, I'm gonna talk to you about this in a minute. So I have some blocks done and I want to show you what I did. So I picked out the blue and I used this thread, which is absolutely perfect for the blue. And I used the yellow kind of gold color right here on the background. And look at this. Isn't it stunning? Did you see this one yet, Don? Maybe uh, not. It's sitting on the machine. Um... It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. And that was just let it stitch. And I actually used my iPhone. I went upstairs, which is like three steps upstairs. So I'm right there. Uh, hard to hear, but I used my iPhone with my um, Luminaire and I was able to keep an eye on it. So oh, yes. I thought that was pretty darn cool. Watch notification. Yes. I ran out of bobbin. Gasp. And my watch notified me that it was uh, a thread break, it said. So I ran downstairs, changed the bottom, set it going back. That's yeah, like, uh. so this one is just a stitch and leave it. It's stunning. 
Uh, this is another one of the folded fabrics. Isn't that beautiful? I like it this way, actually. So I did the gold and pink chickens. It's not really a pink. It's like a pale pink. And then added the blue in, which I think is gorgeous. Then, of course, you have to do a chicken, right? So I, this is the first one I did. And I love the writing background. I love it. I think it's really pretty. I used the blue and the blue for the chicken and then the pink. So it all blends in. Now let's go back to the stripey one right here. I went through and I thought, oh, that looks an awful lot like this. This is the one I stitched. This is here. And I thought, this is really cool fabric. It can kind of tie everything in. So for a quick block, I just took this one and I did the first few steps, the, the, you know, for the batting to set up the block. And then I did some programmed, uh, stitching quilting from in my machine. It took literally five minutes to do. And I thought, hey, it's kind of cheating, but I also love it. <laughs> Why not? So I'm going to have different stripes like this, which I think looks stunning, or maybe put one in between. But when you put them all together, man, it's looking good. Anita, it's looking good. Anita says, I like the folded fabric. Can I use pre-cut jelly rolls? Uh, it's a little bit thinner than that, but yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because it's like an inch so you could I would I just didn't have any that matched what I did is I always with my layer cakes I keep the scraps on top so and I keep it all together so I went through everything and I pulled out the scraps and I cut them into strips so little bit of everything so any of the leftovers and these are the ones that I'm going to be using so they are yeah pretty close to two and a half so yeah you can by the way I'm doing the eight by eight size so it would be depending on your size maybe if you go down to the smallest one you could you know cut them in half or something but I'm doing the eight by eight size, no reason, except for I just really like that size. And it is the A size, I believe. And there's two sizes bigger. So it might fit better in the other ones, you know, you never know. Um, I'm loving the fabric. I'm loving the colors that I picked. They're all right here and the blues. These are the main ones. And I picked a green. So it's not quite the same, but it matches the other threads as well. And it looks beautiful when you stitch it. It's close enough to there. And then, of course, orange, bright orange and red. So the roosters stand out. So I'm really happy with it. I love it. I think it looks fantastic. And I think this will be a really colorful country yet fancy design. But these are fantastic and easy to do. Today, we are going to be making another one of these. Now, these uh, fancy stitching, whatever you want to call it, motifs, but it's not really a motif, they take a long time to stitch out. So the folded fabric is the technique and the stitching. We'll talk about it and I'll tell you how I put... Um, I put colors and how I made it all work. So we're going to be doing another one. Um, it's awesome. So before we get started, before we go to the machine, everyone, please give the video a like, share it with your friends, because this is a lot of fun. This is a fantastic design. It really caught my attention. I love the colors that Anita Good Design did, but I think I like mine a little bit better. I always try to do something different anyways. So I'm going to do another couple of chickens. I'll probably do another cheater stripe one because I think it looks awesome and uh, keep it going. So yeah, give the video a like, subscribe if you're new. Let us know if you're new so everyone can say hi and welcome you to the gang. 
And uh, let's go to the machine and let's get started. So my machine is a Luminaire 2 and 7511 needle. I barely ever change it. 8x8 eight eight, eight hoop, cutaway, no show mesh stabilizer, and bobbin check. It's pretty good. It's almost full. I don't know if it'll last the whole time, but it's there. So let's go into embroidery mode. And the first step is we're going to build the block. Oh, by the way, Bjorn says hi. Hi. I got to move Bjorn, though. Oh, and my nails are getting ready for Valentine's Day. I don't know if you guys noticed them. They're purdy. Aren't they purdy? So this is the placement line for the batting. The way Anita Good Design does stuff is that it moves the batting out of the seam allowance. So the batting square is just a little bit smaller. And I'm using black thread so you guys can see what I'm doing. It doesn't show up very well if I don't. And I am using warm and natural batting. Thank you, Debbie Mitchell. There we go. Um, which is beautiful for quilts. Now, this one isn't going to be a quilt like on my bed it but it is going to go up on the quilt wall that i have in uh the living room Qu quilt room quilt wall also known as living room like yeah but i think this one will stand out because of the i mean the b fabric is gorgeous i didn't know if it would work but i thought oh i gotta work with that blue it is amazing so it's going to stitch it around twice, make sure it's held down, then we're going to trim it up, and then we're going to start building our folded fabric. So folded fabric is a fantastic technique to learn. You just have to think about it a little bit when you're doing it, and I'll show you how to, you know, get it right, because sometimes it gets confusing. I do get confused sometimes. Not so much on one like this, but when you're making sashing for a block. So, you can't be lazy and not cut this out. So, let's go back to the desk, Don. It's always best to cut at the desk. You get a much better cut. It's also always best to use your duckbill scissors in the manner that they were designed for. And what they do is they keep um, the sharp point this point from jabbing into your stabilizer which I have done on a live just for fun no I didn't do it on purpose and it poked through my stabilizer which makes it less stable which is you know not a good thing at all so yeah I like it glides along this stuff is delightful this does not have to be perfect I'm not hacking it as I normally do, but it's not perfect. You don't need to spend time on it because it will be inside the seams. But always do the best you can. Practice is good. Let's get rid of that. Looking good. Let's go back to the machine. Yes, I'm doing 8x8. Eight eight. Most of the quilt blocks that I'm doing are 8x8. Eight I just happen to like the size. That's all it is. So yeah, eight by eight. And I'm pretty sure, Nancy, I think you're right. It says the A size. I'm pretty sure it is. So we're going to start our folded fabric and I'm going to bring my fabric here and we can just pick randomly which ones I want to do. These are all the ones, all the ones that I have to choose from. Random fabric. Kind of random, yeah. I just cut them in strips, that'll do. So the first step in folded fabric is going to be like an applique. So there's nothing folded about it, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use, I think, a gold B. I guess I got to move that. I was going to leave it there, but I guess not. Gold. 
There we go. So make sure you leave seam allowance at the top and at the sides. Anything on the inside, we're going to trim, if that makes any sense. That's how I try to remember it. Anything on the inside, so this line, we're going to be trimming. So we're going to stitch that down, and I've done it hopefully close enough that I can leave it without trimming. There we go. Yep, so we have a nice seam allowance, seam allowance, seam allowance. This is on the inside. You could neaten that up if you want, but it's pretty close. So it's going to stitch it down twice. So while it's doing that, I'm going to pick my next fabric, which I think I'll do some flowers. Isn't that beautiful? I like all the bee fabric. So the next step is going to show you where the block goes, how big it is. Now they're all the same, but you notice there's an overlap there. And that's why I said, don't worry about a little bit. So this is just to show you the block to make sure you have enough fabric. Let's see if this is going to, yeah, see, that's the problem when you don't trim it right there mine catches it every time so before we continue on i am gonna fix it sometimes you can get away with it apparently today is not that day so because we don't want this to show right so i'm just gonna cut that fabric off super easy fix but you know what? It's probably better if you don't do it at all. So next time I will just cut it a little bit shorter. So never mind that. That happens. So I'm going to check to see if I like the piece together and I do. And it's going to fit for sure. So then I'm going to flip it over. And the next step on the machine tells me it's a line. And that's your cue that we are going to do the folded fabric. So we're going to stitch it down and flip it. And I always do like a dry run of it to make sure I'm putting it the right way. So if it's stitching down here, you're going to fold it back and you have that nice seam there. So face down above is what we're doing. So let's stitch that down. Ooh, what's happening? Okay. I fixed it. Well, that's what you're supposed to do, isn't it? So once that stitches, then we're going to do the action part, the flip. And I just really love how this looks. I love it. And pull it a little bit. Now, the cool thing is it kind of sticks to the batting. So look, you get this nice flat. Uh, you could use tape if you wanted, but see, so just finger press the seam. It's beautiful though. Kind of sticks to it. I like it. Are there any questions so far? Um, we're talking about Karina's cinnamon buns and Lynn wants to eat them. <laughs> Typical Saturday morning. Typical. Uh, it's from a Surrey star and it's, oh, I don't usually keep the names with it. Uh, I'll have to go back and look. So, uh, this time just for, you know, safety. Now this doesn't have to be neat. I don't often recommend trimming at the machine and there's a lot of reasons why. I don't recommend that, but this doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be anything. So it's just easy. So what do we do next? Eh, the same thing we just did. Let's do it. So we are going to do the next one, which I think I want a bit darker. So I'm going to pick the matching fabric to that, but with a green background, I want to keep uh, a little bit of green. 
So once this, this is our placement, so we know how big it is, the next step is a line. And I'm going to lay it down. I like that. That does look good. And so now I'm going to flip it over. And this is the this line that we just stitched out this top one is our line so you want to you want to make sure that you're having enough room this is not a good time to play fabric chicken i'm just saying because you'll lose every time so no fabric chicken i mean obviously i know this piece is too big and frankly i could have cut it in half but i'm gonna do that just shortly so it stitches it down and then we're going to do that beautiful fold thing. Do, do, do you dance. I'm not going to worry about this. I wouldn't even trim that. Um, you probably don't need to leave that much. But, and again, I'm going to fold it down. And it kind of sticks to the batting. And beautiful creases. You could, if you, you wanted them to be perfect, you could... Um, have a little iron and iron them. Now this step is just stitching everything down so it stays. Doesn't that look great? I think I have, this is why I love the layer cakes. I mean, you can do a whole quilt with layer cakes. You have to get more than one. I only have one of these, but so another flip and fold, I am loving it. So I'm just going to trim this up and this is not enough for another one. So I'm going to keep it though, because it might work for a little applique, but it is pretty thin. I'll measure it out and see. So again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We just don't want it to get caught like I did last time. Put that aside and I liked it so much. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. What am I going to pick, Don? I want to see. Yeah, it'll be a dark one, but I just want to see if I have the same pattern, but with different color in the background, because I also think that'll look cool. <clears throat> All right, hold on, Captain Jack. Hold on, my luminaire. My luminaire friend. I'm looking through my layer cake to see if I can match it up. Otherwise, I'll just use randomly what I have. I just thought it would look cool. So we've got the green and the white. There, I'm hitting it now. I see the green. I got two more of those greens. And I may have used it. Oh, thanks, Don. <laughs> no. Yeah, they're, they're, they're watching you flip through your cool fabric. Uh, it's beautiful. It is. All right, so that's a negative. There's only no, two. No black with the flowery. Thing. No, I was kind of hoping. But they all kind of match anyway. So, okay, back to the machine, Don. And we're going to pick something like this, which you can see matches still. It's perfect. The flowers yeah. are similar. They're a bit lighter, but it looks great. So darker. And then I think I got to get the blue in there. So awesome. I just thought it would look cool. Sometimes with layer cakes. Um, oh, wait. I lost my place. Hold the phone. I lost my place. I thought it was the wrong step so okay hold on we gotta get rewind as i call it like it's a vhs there we go we're gonna go back to the step that i just did because i was holding the fabric i didn't place it down oh. <laughs> that's okay no need to panic just do it again you can't tell so fabric facing down above so when you fold it over if you're unsure about where to place the fabric, just kind of hold it down with your hand and then flip it and make sure it fits. This is, you know, easier because they're all straight lines, but sometimes with the folded fabrics, you're getting like 
crazy shapes and it's hard to figure out. So I just make a habit of it. Oh yeah, the black looks good. I like it. So now we're back on track and see, you really can't see that I made a boo-boo at all. It's my favorite, I think, or one of my favorite. I just think it looks like quilting. And when you add like a quilting look with the embroidery, I mean, does it get any better than that? Not really. I'm going to say not really. All right, we're going to give this a little quick trim. Now we have two left. So we'll have to figure out which ones. I want to get a little bit of blue in there. And there we go. So just a quick trim. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be gone. So let's start with our placement. And I'm going to get my strips here. I think we'll do a blue. It should tie in nicely with this flower. So this is our placement. So we're going to make sure everything goes right. Let's see, which one do you think will look better? Oh, I, I think like I think it needs to be a light one. Yeah, there you go. I, I kind of like that. So here's my idea. And yeah, you can always lay it out to figure it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yep. I think that'll look great. Then it starts with the bees and the honeycomb and ends with the bees and the honeycomb. So, done, done. There we go. I won't lose my place this time. Face down and above. So when you fold it, you get the pretty colors. Perfect. Are there any questions about how to do this folded fabric? It's quite easy. And the results are absolutely perfect, which I'm happy for. This is the easy part. There we go. So once that's done, flip and fold it down, holding everything nicely, make a little crease. I do love how it kind of sticks to it and see it's nice and flat. And we're going to stitch it down and then we only have one left, which is kind of awesome. So it's the same thing again and again. I think I could probably sit here all day and do this, which is kind of cool. It's easy. I try to do that with that. Yeah, I it, because you need to line it up. It's slightly off. Um, but yeah, thank you. You could do it with the lettering the other way. I just don't happen to have um, a sheet of it because my other writing one is for another chicken and we are going to do the chicken and the already striped fabric. I'm going to show you guys how to put that together on your machine. So we'll have to have an extra camera and maybe even sewing together how to how to bring it all together because i th i'm gonna start doing that a little bit more i think we're all ready for it i know there's a lot of good sewists out there but there's also a lot of newbies so you can do all the embroidered quilted blocks that you want and if you can't sew it properly <laughs> it's not going to do you any good so we're going to work on that and i will be sewing on uh the luminaire because the cameras are here so last step and there we go we want to make sure that when this flips that we have enough for a seam allowance uh, on the bottom because this is an outside one so I could probably be a little more efficient with it to make sure and stitch it down so we need a seam allowance on the side which we've done the whole way but we also need it on the bottom there's no trimming of this one everything on the inside gets trimmed everything on the outside you need the seam allowance 
So when you sew it together, you have something to sew it together. And the last one. And this is pretty good looking for leftover strips, you know? I'm not, I'm not complaining. So I do have enough for seam allowance. It's close. I probably, because this one is smaller, should have used it on the inside. But it's enough, so I'll be okay, for sure. And now we are going to do the fancy stitches. Now, you don't have to do all of them. They're quite intense. I do think they look great, though. I really think they look great. I am not using, although it's tempting, I'm not going to be using too much in the way of black on it so the first one is up here and the way I've been you know deciding is if I do it in the gold it's not going to show up white I can probably do anything um, but I kind of want to bring this blue in so I'm going to change my black to blue you could do all one color if you wanted to you could just do them all in blue uh, or pink or green or anything like that. But that's how I figure out colors. Now, I picked out all my thread colors that I need for just about everything. I didn't pay much attention to the instructions that they, you know, they tell you which fl Floriani colors. I didn't bother with that. I just know... The chickens are going to be this, this, and this, and I want it to match. So this is the fun part. This is what makes it fancy, and some of the stitches are fantastic. But if you don't happen to like one, then just skip it. It's easy. I kind of like the thicker ones on this one. So the blue stands out beautifully on the gold. And it's really good on the flowers, too. It shows up just, just enough. Isn't that awesome? So when you're looking at this block, you will see the different colors. But you'll also notice the blues that are everywhere on it. I wish these connected. But they don't. I guess they're too far away to connect. Isn't that cool? So that's how to, you know, coordinate your colors. If you want to follow along exactly with what Anita Good Design has, um, theirs is beautiful. It's browns and beige colors and red and yellow and black. And it looks fantastic. But I just like to do something different. No one ever thinks of blue. What? Oh, you want it? Yeah. We're going to look at our stitches here. We're going to put on the magnification. Is that uh, good? The, yeah, just the coloring on the thread in the background, it just shows up a little bit better. Okay. So we're now magnified so you guys can see it. Almost lunchtime. Let's see. I love the magnifier. It works pretty well, I think. Now you can really see how the colors work on it. I think it's pretty cool. Can you use the magnifier? Yep, it's on! That is such a groovy trick. I wish it was a bit darker, though. But you can see on the flower and on this little peak thing there how close the blue is and I love it. Sue did a video before Christmas on binding that's worth watching. Oh, that was such a happy moment. I, I couldn't wait to share with you guys. And it seems like such a silly thing that I couldn't figure out. But once I figured it out, how to get the corners done, I don't have any problems anymore so it was a big secret because I guess quilty people uh, versus embroidery people I didn't even think of holding 
the fabric a certain way for the corner. So, yeah, watch it if you need trouble with binding. Uh, if you have trouble with binding, and then it'll be over because it's awesome. But yeah, we're going to put it all together. I think I'm going to kind of move into the finishing because I see and I hear that people are having a hard time with that. So sewing does take practice. Why is your hand up in the air? I'm waiting to ask a question. Oh! Well, not really. I want to make a statement. Oh. All right. Don wants to make a statement. We have 154 people watching. Woohoo! 157. The numbers are up a little bit. All right. All right. I will have to watch that again, yes. Lorelai, sorry I'm late. Feeling a bit better. Excited to see this. It's a beautiful design set. And I think you could, you know, match the colors to anything you wanted. Oh, thank you so much. Nora, thank you. Be kind. Be kind. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So the next we're going to stitch out our chickens at the bottom and we're stitching just part of it black, but I'm going to skip it because I won't have time to stitch everything. Whoops, wrong way. I'll go back and do it and then it switches to red and then it goes back to black for the outline. See, there's so much involved in this one. Okay, so this is a solid one, and actually, it's really cute. So, let's see. Do we want something darker, or do we want to stick with the blue? Because the blue will look great. Contrast on there. Let's just do the blue. And then there's a second color in it. There's some red dots. I think I will, there's another thick one that I'm going to do, and I think I will use the pink on that, or the light color, or whatever. Rose, hello everyone, sorry I'm so late. Hey, as long as you're here, that's awesome. Um, perfect. Lorelai, good morning Sarah, and thank you Donna. I'm on the mend, but it has been a very long flu. Yes. My speaker microphone is breaking up. Eh, it's probably YouTube. Scratchy mic is back again. What was the problem? Uh, just every once in a while your levels are a little high and it clips and that's like what it is. So I just turned it down a bit more. All right, and Usually we should be good. clear. So, yeah, the blue looks great. If it's still doing it, it's uh-oh. Is there something floating around? Sorry, Judy Quilt. I'm going to be good and stop my machine, and I'm going to get this fluffy <laughs> out of there. Yes, I saw it. I saw it on the camera. There we go. Judy Sorry, Quilt. Judy Quilt. <laughs> this was my favorite when you showed the all-access book. It was, it was tough, man. It was tough. To decide which one to do and I just thought these chickens are just so awesome what's so awesome I don't know they're just cute, they're just cute. I think it might be the the damask the, the scroll work can you do a picture-in-picture picture, dear just while we're yeah, talking Either way, but it's just stitching. They can still see it. It's kind of a neat way of doing it. I did a little research and the B fabric is from Michael Miller. Missouri Star carries it. Oh, the bluish gray honeycomb is called the Queen Bee. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. So we're picture in picture. I think this is what caught my attention. Stampin' Sue says, I'm seeing lots of chicken stuff. So, yeah, you can, you can still see everything. Maybe the other way might have been better. So, it takes a, a little while for these to, to stitch. 
but it's worth it. I like my cheater one, but I think this is what caught my attention. And I'm not really a pink person. No offense, Lynn. <laughs> no offense. But this is such a soft pink, it almost looks like he's glowing. So if you missed it at the beginning, there you go. So yeah, thumbs up. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up, please. It only takes a second. It makes a big difference on the videos um, and for YouTube. So it's awesome. The striped fabric is Norcott Be Kind. I, I just thought it was super cool that the stripes look like exactly what we're stitching out. Um, I was, I pondered doing um, like stitches, motif stitches on the sewing end and doing it, but I thought, eh, I don't want to mess that up. So yeah, this design is very farmhouse chic. It is, it is. I'm seeing a lot of chicken fabrics and stitch designs. Yeah, that's, I mean, chickens are in apparently. Um, but see how great the writing looks behind. And if you read it, it it's all very chickeny. Yep, which is cool. And recipes, which is maybe not cool for the chicken, but you know, I think this beside this is gonna look amazing. And then a stripe after that. Look at how all those colors blend. I think it's awesome. A lot of these blocks would be great for a table runner and placemats. Yeah, wouldn't that be so cool? Lorelei says that blue thread is such a perfect match. It looks much like it is already part of the fabric. I was so happy when I picked the blue. That was my thing. If I couldn't find the exact blue, because I want the blue to stand out, that's my, you know, kind of focal color, your eye will be drawn to the red and the orange briefly, but then you'll see the beautiful blue. Um, but I, I pulled out my whole blue drawer where I keep it, and I put it down, and I just held it up to this in really good light into this blue but it is really close when are you doing the dime stitch outs good question um it's going to be the same time that we have done it for the last couple of years um the dime door and the Sueville. <laughs> i'll just call it Sueville. <laughs> and uh the end of the month the last Thursday of the month, she's going to announce everything. For the first one, I'm going to be on the show. I'm so excited, uh, which is awesome. And then the Saturday, we're going we're gonna to do it, which is awesome. Awesome. Suzanne Manning, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. This fabric pack makes me want to make this design. I know, right? That's exactly how I felt. I was kind of wishy-washy, if that makes any sense on it. I was just like, oh, I love the design, but eh, until I figured this out and got my blue going and got the pink going, I was like, yep, I figured it out. Um, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I think they are beautiful. I'm going to do... A couple more chickens with this background because that'll make the chickens stand out a little bit more. Um, I think it'll be good. There, we're getting done. That's that's so pretty. Look how good that looks. Wow, that's awesome. Are you going to do the whole month of designs since they are releasing once a week? No, I think, I think she is going to do a project with all or some of the designs. So it'll be a so long project. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But I think it'll be good. I'm excited to see. I have no idea. Also great for excuse me, putting on towels. Yeah, and remember, you know, you can take the parts of this and 
use it for, for something else. See, I see this as very Halloween-y. Not into chickens, but love the design. Yeah, you know, that's what I was just saying. You could take these parts, because this is stunning for a quilt block. And again, for this too, you could just not do the chickens. The flowers, all that looks great. Oh, we got to change colors. Okay, so I'm going to take the magnifier off. This is a two color motif. Well, I can't do anything with my left hand, apparently. There we go. And I'm going to change colors. And I'm going to take off the blue and I'm going to do the pink. And that works out really well because the next one I want to do pink. So the pink stands out. It's not really pink. It's kind of an orangey pink, like a rose? salmon. Like rose gold? No, look at it. It's not. Oh. Yeah. Okay. yeah. More of a peach color, I would say. Kind of salmony, peach. Yeah. A little bit. It was hard to pick it out, but I did. Okay, so this is getting done. How are we doing for time? I don't have my watch. Okay, well, we'll do one more row. And then... Oh, see, doesn't that look cute with the two colors? Look, that stands out. So much fun. So, yeah, if you didn't like the chickens, you just don't have to do the chickens. The These blocks are... You know, if you just didn't stitch the second, the chicken part, the thicken part. <laughs> Apparently, my kitten loves to watch stitching and will not let me be today. Aww. She's intently watching Sue's machine. She probably wants to eat her. Eat it. Chase it. No. Um, awesome. Looks like no show mesh. Yes, it is cutaway that I'm using. Is that what we're asking? Yes, cutaway. I like the no-show mesh for quilt blocks. It just makes it nice and soft and easy to use, which is cool. So this is chickeny, so I'm going to go to the next one. I am going to do it, but later. There we go. This is the one I wanted. So I'm thinking the pink is going to show up nicely here. So isn't that beautiful with the blue? I am going to finish it. I'll just do it afterwards. I heard it announced that you'll be on the show on the 27th. Yeah. Nerve wracking. But yes, I will be on the show. She also likes to try and sit in my hoop while the machine is running. Oh, you don't get points for sewing kitties. Just saying. You can sew kitty appliques, but not with a real kitty. Will you add a backing and stitch in the ditch? That is what I'm going to do. And like I said, I think it's about time I started working on that with you guys. Now, I'm not a seamstress or, or sewist by any means. So hopefully people won't blog down, bog down the comments with telling me what I should do. Um, but I make it work. So if you're new to sewing, you'll be able to make it work. Like I said, you can create as many blocks as you want, uh, but if you can't sew them together very well, it's like, meh, for sure. Have you seen the Sweet Pea Bookshelf? Yeah, it's kind of cute. People are having tons of fun with that. Maybe next month we'll do it. Oh, can you do the picture in picture again? I want to give you guys a sneak peek of... I'm sorry? Oh, no, just leave okay. it. What is chickeny? It looks like bees. The fabric is bees, but the design is chicken. Let me know when you got it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek of Mug Rug Mondays to come. So the first one, Lynn, you'll love this. I kind of made it for you. So it's a monogram spool. Love it. So this is just a quick thing. 
look at this one. Is that not the cutest ever? And then there we go. So this is a wooden button with cut out hearts. Isn't that cute? I love it. So that's a sneak peek. That's the next three weeks of it. So you guys can let me know what you think. Just a sneak peek. That's all you get. That's all you get. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm done with the picture in picture. Hehe. <laughs> Misha says, uh, I'm fixing to start the bookshelf. Lorelai, you're a movie star, Sue. No, no, not quite a movie star. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are several chicken, there's chickens everywhere on this one. Um, like I said, I particularly like how the chicken goes with the fancy scroll work behind it. It's awesome. Nancy says, I like the mug, mug rugs. Donna says, love them. Maureen says, love those. Yeah, yesterday was a pajama mug rug kind of day. So, yeah, I just stitched mug rugs and was happy. Sandy says, I love your show. Thank you so much. Yay! Awesome. Love them. Yeah, just a sneak peek. Oh, that, that is looking gorgeous. Yep, pretty happy. Tank, we're not done yet. Go lay down. We're not done yet, boo. Tank's sense of time is a little bit off. He's sitting in the sunshine at the top of the stairs. <laughs> love, love, love the mug rugs. You are so creative. Yes, thank you. I am. No, I think he just needed a drink and he likes to sit in the sunshine. I had, Suzanne says, I had a pet chicken when I grew up. That's cool, I think. I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, was it blue and pink like mine? <laughs> yeah, I think outside the box. Make it match your fabric. No one, I mean, we'd probably lose it if there was a blue chicken, so, <laughs> Sandy says, Sue's a rock star. I don't know about that either, but I, I'm getting better. My dad did too. I had several flocks and sold eggs. That's cool. I didn't realize so many people had chickens. I guess it's the thing now. I think we see it all over town. Not, not that I ever, you know, go out or anything, but you know, I remember. No, the we've got two hunting hounds. What do you think's gonna happen? <laughs> no, no. Has everyone watching given a thumbs up for this awesome live? Yeah, I hope so. The the likes show engagement, and YouTube loves it. And the idea is we want uh, YouTube to serve up the video to to everyone. So, all right, I am going to stop this because it is just going to keep stitching, but let me do a trim. It's pretty intense. It does take a long time. I still have 15 minutes of stitching left. Let's go back to the desk, Don, and I'll show you guys the progress. And what I like to do, too, oh, there's a thread there. Are we at the desk? Yeah, we are. All right. So what I like to do is look. And see what stands out. So I like the pink. I think the blue up here stands out. Maybe this not quite so much. And like I said, if you don't want to do the chickens, I haven't stitched any chickens and I think it would look great like that. Um, the chickens on this one, for example, they don't even show up very well. I mean, these are chickens too, <laughs> pink and yellow. Why not? Why not? I couldn't decide what to do. And I'm like, ah, oh, pink, better than green. Um, but if you skipped these, it would still look really good, even with the two. So you can customize the blocks um, to suit what you want and try different things. So how about this? Now, this looks fantastic together. See, I'm not a chicken guy, but I like that. Uh, I, I don't, I think this is probably the f one of the first times I've done a chicken. Yeah. 
Oh, no, I think I did when I first got the Luminaire. I did the Anita Good Design. Yes, and I did a huge chicken. That was awesome. Yep. I did it on the big, 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 big hoop just because I could. And it was big. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It was big. So 11 by 16 block. Yeah, there was a lot of stitching on that. So... I like how these two look. And what stands out are the blues. The blues stand out. And because this matches, I think that looks great. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to place these two together because I really like it. Awesome. So I hope you guys have tons of fun stitching out these chickens. And, or not, if you don't want to do chickens, there are a lot of other blocks that are stunning like this. Now I, this, I love that. look at that. That makes the blue stand out. Isn't that pretty? You could do that with a solid and make it cool just out of that. Just out of these ones, there's a couple of them that are similar but different sort of thing. Um, for sure. For sure. But, I mean, look, that's amazing. So, pick your colors, pick your fabric, um, stitch the chickens or not the chickens, do a cheater block whenever you can. I thought this was particularly clever, and I love it. I think it's fantastic looking. These are just flowers um, just off of my machine, nothing fancy. It literally took five minutes to put together, and I'm all for it. So next week, we're going to continue working on this. I might do an applique chicken, um, but, I mean, it's pretty basic. I think we'll focus on how to do this. I'll show you guys how to make a block like this on the Luminaire. And I'll also uh, work on the sewing with you guys. Uh, the camera's in place. I'll have to practice a little bit, but... Yeah, I'll practice a little bit and uh, I'll show you guys how to put it all together. And then the next week after that is the dime. So we won't be doing anything about it, but we can do the finishing bits. I want to get more into that. So layer cakes, beautiful. Chickens, fancy flock from Anita, good design, beautiful. Thread, beautiful put it all together and it's so much fun to do so thanks everyone for watching don't forget to like the video subscribe if you haven't done so yet if you're new and if you have any questions about the video today head on over to the oml embroidery university facebook group and ask away we have a great gang and it's easy to ask questions and you'll get some help if you didn't understand something. So I need a good design. The one I did is eight by eight uh, cutaway and regular needle and this gorgeous um, fabric. So awesome. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye everyone.